Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Dota 2 Canada Cup Season 4 Grand Finals. It is the champions of Summoner's Rift versus Will Wreck while whistling. It's a best of five, and we're here in Game 3. We could potentially go the distance, and honestly, I wouldn't be surprised. These two teams, very close in skill, very close games thus far. A lot of action happening here on the Canada Cup stream. As always, thank you so much for joining us. Both of these teams battling up for a decent chunk of a prize pool. $4,250 for the winner, $2,000 for second place, a big chunk of change. And honestly, the pride as well. Champions of Canada Cup, a pretty good title to have. I'm not alone today. I'm joined by Pip Muckle, our, of course, our production manager. We've got Mott Packs, the stats man, and as always, Greg. What is Hip TV? Greg, how the hell are you, man? Muted mic. Good work, Greg. Nice job. <sighs> All right. You know, I wasn't going to say anything, but it happens. Oh, God, man. That's like the first one of those we've had in a while, too. Yeah, and that's course, on you, man, my too. my fault. Yeah. Wow. I'm playing Pimp Muckle. He muted me. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, that's a <laughs> lie. No, that is a lie. I will defend Pimp with my life and say that, Greg, that is on him. Do, do not bring Pimp into this at all. Let's yeah, go. Okay. Yeah. Typical. Anyway, game three, what I was saying is that... Uh, it's now a best of three. We've reset, basically. And, uh, well, we'll see how the draft goes. It seems to have been pretty crucial to so far. Though the last game, I think the drafts were fairly even. It really just came down to Sniper just being able to do whatever he wanted. The lack of initiation for Summer's Rift was uh, pretty unfortunate. Yeah, that was uh, Summer's Rift. I thought it was going to be fine with the Stampede, the Blink Stomp, but Bugatti didn't really do anything that last game. His first two games have been surprisingly not great. I go back to that game he played Axe, and I forget against who, who it was. He had a Dazzle at his back, and he crushed he had like a five-minute Vanguard and like an eight-minute Blink Dagger. But that's not going to be the case because I don't think we are ever going to give Bugatti that Axe. So he has to deal with other offlane heroes. So the Timbersaw was a rough choice for him in that first game. He was level one at like six minutes. He did end up winning the game. His team really helped out there. The second game, his Centaur War Runner really didn't accomplish much. It, the, he had very few Blink Stomp initiations. They really couldn't find a fight. Again, we talked a lot about it. It was all about positioning. And Wheel had it in spades. They get the third pick Io, though. That is the big deal for Wheel in this draft so far. And uh, I think that's that's pretty valuable coming out for Wheel right now. Troll again picked up here. Been a very popular pick in this series. Popular hero in general, in general, but in all three games so far. Storm Spirit as well for Brax. I think that's one of his better heroes. He seems to perform very well on it. He plays really, really aggressively. Uh, uses his ball lightning extremely aggressively to try to force initiations uh, as, as much as he can. And Phoenix picked up here. I wonder if we're going to see just a t straight up Tiny picked right now. Would not be that surprised, to be honest. Yeah, there's a possibility. Tiny, pretty solid combo between the two. If you were watching Dota Pit earlier, you'll know that uh, that was a pretty disgusting combo for Cloud9. We'll see if they go that route. Maybe they pick something else. They also free up... Um, they, they pick up the Disruptors to make it so that they don't get glimpsed back. They're not having to deal with uh, that type of initiation or counter-initiation. So they have that support with them. The one thing I'm concerned about is that these heroes in lane is not the strongest. However, with the Tiny Io mid lane... <laughs> Whoever is going mid for Summoner's Rift has their work cut out for them for sure. We are looking to really take this game with a tiny IO combo. Uh, and uh, the Phoenix, interesting pick here. I mean, I think it was pretty easy to predict that the tiny was going to be next afterwards. And this could work out pretty nice for Summoner's Rift if they do get those fire spirits down correctly. I mean, tiny will just be attacking so slow if he gets hit by those. And comes out. Ooh. Then as well, that's a, I like their draft. I'm not sure if I like the Phoenix offlane, but against a, a Disruptor plus another safe lane hero, I think it actually could be okay. He's generally a, a real problem in tri lanes, a, against tri lanes, I should say. Level 1, by the way, level 1, Supernova, pretty terrible, but Tiny, pretty slow attack animation. The rest of the team, not great as well. They've got to get a, 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 a speedy right clicker in the safe lane, maybe. Well, otherwise, dealing with this Phoenix is going to be easier said than done. Although, Iroh does have overcharge, obviously. And with Tiny, that's pretty solid. Even maybe getting an assault cross. Oh, okay. What? That is, that's out of left field. That is a fan of Soyon support Meepo coming out for your Radiant team. I'm going to just check the chat real quick. That is intentional. He is not saying remake. He is say, not saying that is not what I wanted to pick. 
Uh, that is a 100% Meepo picked up for Goody in the support role. More than likely in the support role. I mean, I think it has to be. Well, uh, maybe not. I mean, they could just like put it in a solo lane or something. I don't know. Possibility. Or like dual lane it in bottom. Who knows? I mean, how else are they? Who else are going to? Like, how are they going to lane this if this isn't a core? I'm not sure, man. This is uh, this is interesting, actually. It, yeah, it might it might be. I mean, it kind of has to be, right? I think like, so. Dual lane mid, off lane clockwork. Yeah. Wow, I was not expecting that. But Phantom Soy on playing the Meepo is the crazy thing. Maybe you thought, okay, you give it to, to, to Talair, but he's going to be playing the clockwork. What a ballsy choice coming out from Wheel. And this could be either be a genius move or it could be a disaster. One of the two. But it is a I Meepo. Mean, Throw your Keepos out in chat. Let's go, team. Let's go. Certainly pretty good with against the uh, Phoenix. <laughs> That's definitely one way to deal with it. Yep. Is there anything to bring down the Meepo? They don't have a lot of AoE. You can, like, single one out and, like, finger him and... That's a lot easier said than done because, you know, the, when you see those Meepo clones run at you in force, it's hard to just pick one out. There's just a mob of them. It gets difficult. They don't have much in terms of AoE damage at this point. Supernova is kind of okay, but again, we already talked about Meepo is pretty much a direct counter to Supernova in general. This is Meepo's 20th appearance of uh, 6.83. He's 5 and 14. Dear goodness, that is not the win rate you are looking for, Meepo, but they might be able to get away with it. The question is, first of all, the Meepo, we could, we could put that on the back burner for a second. Brax, how is he going to deal with this mid lane dual lane up between Relic and Sleasel? This does not feel like a very easy matchup at all. And I'm a bit afraid uh, for Brax in this middle lane unless he gets help coming out from, say, Demon. Yeah, I mean, Sleasel has to make a pretty huge mistake for this to be, uh, I think, for this to be an okay mid lane for the Storm. Or they just need to help him a lot. By the way, um... I like the last pick from Summoner's Rift. They know that Wheel are being a gr be gr bit greedier with their lanes, so they'll do the same. They'll pick a Chen for Mad. I like that decision. However, top rune spot, maybe some action happening. Relic not skilling a point yet. Talera about to walk down Brax, and it looks like actually Summoner's Rift will get the better the better end of this trade. Bottom lane, Phantom Soyan looking to get the rune. Is he going to grab it? Who's going to get it? It's going to be close. It is going to be Phantom Soyan. Bugatti not throwing down any fire spirits. He actually skills Icarus Dive level one. Thunderstrike's gonna go. They have no glimpse, so no way they can kill him, but they do harass him. He'll be forced to eat a tree or two. And uh, so far, the Meepo pick, all eyes will be on that lane. I, I don't expect anything crazy early on. Maybe our eyes should be on the mid lane instead, as the the threat of death early on is is something else. They didn't get uh, Sleasel that, that bounty room, which would have been an immediate bottle flying out, but instead... He will stay mid. He'll try to secure runes, and Brax is going to get zoned out by Sleasel's right click. Although, Brax is doing a lot of damage to him. Uh, uh, this is a really interesting matchup from the side of the storm because you have to be extremely careful about your positioning, obviously, but you do want to try to put as much damage onto the Wisp as you can to sort of force him either back to the fountain or to, you know, or force him out of lane. Make sure he always has to go and get the runes. And look at this tornado is coming in. That's actually, this is really, really smart from Mad. I mean, you have to be very careful if you're Sleasel. If you walk towards that tornado, that's more damage than you're willing to take. It's going a bit too far away. The tornado will, debuff will dissipate. Brax is standing at four last hits, so it's not like he's doing poorly. He's he's keeping pace with Relic for the most this lane, part. This, well, this lane does get worse as you move forward. Yeah, so. like level three for both the Iowa and Tiny. Like, if you have Spirits and Toss and Avalanche, it's generally a kill. Bottom lane. Looking to see how this Phoenix does fare here. Uh, seems like it should be okay. He's not going to have much to be experience. a little bit careful. He is harassing Derp Derp. Derp Derp doesn't have a salve. He does have a clarity to work with. He doesn't have level two for glimpse yet. Not that I, I don't know if he would, if that really does much because of Icarus Dive. And no Earth Bond coming out yet for Goody. He's held the point, I believe. No stat point. He has a point and poof. That's it. Oh, yeah. He is, he's level three now. His clone's about to come out. Come on, Goody. There you go. Good work, buddy. And he gets double poof as well. Yeah, and one... You know, I am actually not too familiar with uh, with Phoenix here, but can you dive out of Earthbind? I think if you get Earthbind while you're diving, it cancels it. You probably can dive. I think you get silenced when you're ensnared. I might be wrong about that. 
I so, have not played against Meepo or played Phoenix enough to know this. Yeah, yeah, so it functions. Yeah, fun out. Pitmuckle's right. It's a root. It functions like any other root where you can't you can't dive out of any. You can't use any of your abilities. So that's that's the biggest thing is the Earth Bind followed up by maybe a glimpse, even if they can't kill him. But level one glimpse is so bad that Icarus dive is probably far enough that he can't get that glimpse off half the time. But um, enough about bottom lane. Top lane, Banana Slam Jamma playing the troll yet again, looking to get some revenge after that that second game. And he is sitting at 700 gold. He's got the Wraith Ban. He has a Quelling Blade, so he's like carrying three axes on his person for, for whatever reason. Um, Demon's going to help, or at least, I guess, kind of Shadow Mad here in the jungle. He's sitting around. There's a couple of wards nearby. I really like that Radium is reward. Brax caught out. They've already Avalanche. No toss coming through just yet. Now it goes back. No, he doesn't do it back. Sleasel trying to go for the kill. Overcharge. They can't get it done. And that might have been a kill, but I think they played that wrong. They could have tossed him back, but uh, or mm, it would have been tough. Yep. And uh, while we have him in here, something we did want to mention, there is a giveaway, as always, for the Canada Cup. It's on at Dota 2 Canada Cup on Twitter. A Steel Series rival mouse no, and Dota 2 Canada, G2. I believe. Oh, you're right. Yeah, Dota 2 Canada on Twitter. Steel Series mouse and G2A gift card for available for just a follow and a retweet. So check that out. All right. So what do we got going on here? We have bottom lane and mid lane going the way of Wheel. We have the jungle going the way of Summoner's Rift, probably, and then we have top lane going the way of Summoner's Rift. So the jungle might be the X Factor. Smoke of Deceit gank is going to come out. They're probably going to head all the way bottom and try to get a kill here. I don't know if they can gank mid. It'll be tough. Overcharge, obviously, in the IO. He is not going to scout them out. He just got the rune. Pretty smart timing for Summoner's Rift to make sure they avoid that four-minute rune. Otherwise, that could have been a bit awkward. Instead, they're going to walk all the way around, take a bit of a stroll, pass by some of the camps, say hi to the families. But instead, they're going to look for Goody. He's a big target. They're going to try to jump on him. Oh, Icarus well, dive away. Go. Glimpse back in. They glimpse Demon away. He can't get any of his abilities off, but Goody's still in trouble. He's going to try to fight this. I don't think this is the best choice of action, and Goody is going to fall. It looks like it'll be your first blood. Bugatti's low. Will the right click be there for Derp Derp? He can't chase further. He's going to die again. He should have just gone for the kill. He's going to get hexed up. Excellent rotation from Wheel. And this bottom lane, which was doing so well all of a sudden, they give a lot up there. Good start for Summoner's Rift. Yeah, they're... Fucking Matt is very, very effective with his centaur creeps. And uh, giving some room now to the Phoenix. Has some tranquils. Should be able to just heal up now statically in this bottom lane. And I'm, I'm, I feel like he dived out of the Earthbind, but I'm not sure. Maybe I'm just crazy. He dived and then the Earthbind came, I believe. Maybe I'm, I, I also might be crazy. Maybe I'm just crazy. We're, we're both crazy, Greg, and that's fine. We knew that already from the get-go. Matt's gonna jump onto Derp Derp. Thunderstrike's gonna go. Big Icarus dive. Centaur Conqueror stomp actually misses Bugatti. Glimpse back in. Derp Derp's gonna fall. Big Earth Spike. That glimpse actually saved his life. The poop was about to be there to secure the kill. Goody might fall yet uh -oh. again. So low the right click. They get it done. Wheel are not anticipating this def this aggressive posture coming out from Summoner's Rift down to this bottom lane. And what was once a very good start for the Meepo is turning into a disaster. Derp Derp as well. Again, we've talked about it so often. Disruptor in lane is just not a good hero. No, he's very, very, very weak. And the other thing that I do want to point out here, Brax has made it to level six without dying. And that's pretty huge. And Big I mean, accomplishment. Relic is doing great in this lane in terms of CS. I mean, he's 12 ahead of Brax. But to be honest, that's not good enough Agreed. for a dual lane. I mean, Brax has not died, and he's one of the, like, he's one of the easiest to kill heroes, I think, pre-level 6, just because he has a pretty short attack range, and has to get up close to use Remnant, and uh, he's fine. I mean, now he's haste in level 6. He's not going to die in this lane. At least he shouldn't. So Brax has made it through one of the harder laning phases he'll have in this series, I think, pretty much unscathed. You need to secure kills with this combo. We have saw it so often, specifically from Fnatic. Mad will get caught out, he'll fall. But when Fnatic played that combo, um, it was very easy to see how they played it. Just super aggressively. Well, that's actually a problem. Chen losing all of his creeps is a bit of an issue. But anyways, when you play this combo, you need to be tossing the IO consistently. You need to be throwing the spirits up when you toss him. Relic needs to be behind with an avalanche. It, that's just not been the case. They haven't been aggressive. They've not been getting kills. Like you said, Relic getting CS is fine, but what are they losing? They're losing bottom lane now because they've died a couple of times in the Meepo. They need levels on the Disruptor. He's died a couple of times. Off lane's going pretty well for the Clockwork, all things considered. 31 CS. They do have a lot of farm. 
but I feel like they just aren't getting off to as fast of a start as they could be. Yeah, it feels like they could be capitalizing better on this, and we'll see how Brax does moving forward here. Still struggling a little bit in CS, but I mean, like we said, that's to be expected against the dual lane. He's doing okay overall. The Phoenix doing pretty well. And that's pretty important, honestly. Get, making sure that the Phoenix gets good levels, getting that ultimate online is very important. Chen already has Arcanes building up the mechanism now as well. And fucking Mad doing fairly, fairly well. Two kills, two assists. Been very active on this Chen. Very important, I think. Yeah, the Chen already getting involved down bottom has been huge for him. And it doesn't really stifle his farm all that much. The big problem was him losing his creeps um, just a couple of moments ago. So he has to go all the way back into the jungle and look for some more creeps to work with, and that'll help him get some farm, but it'll take a bit longer. So we've kind of devolved away from that aggressive play because they know that Goody's in the jungle. There's not really any way they're stopping him, and Goody is going to go for the Ags Rush. Ogre Club first, and I can almost guarantee that is not a BKB. And, uh, yeah, Brax has a haste rune. He's starting to get up there in terms of CS. 33... I don't know, man. This is a good start for Wheel, but is it enough? Because, again, we have uh, Banana Slam Jamma on one of his favorite heroes, the Troll, and Brax can probably take over this game at 20 to 30 minutes on the Storm Spirit, uh, given enough room. I would definitely agree with that. And, uh, I mean, I think two two of the stronger heroes for these two individual players. Oh, derp, derp. He's, He's going trouble. to live? No, the Fire Spirit, that last right click coming out, the glimpse is not enough. Bugatti. And he's going to have enough money for his Midas Sumer. They're going to relocate top lane. Big Earth Spike coming out from Demon. What a play. But still, uh, the Hand of God's going to go to toss the Avalanche. Brax jumps in now. BSJ still low. Not dead yet. They're going to relocate and bring Relic and Sleasel back. Talera does die. Big rotations. A lot expended for Summoner's Rift. But they get the kill. And more importantly, they keep Banana Slam Jam of the Cape BSJ alive to slam into Jam. Yep. Very, very favorable engagement there for Summoner's Rift. Brax now has his completed treads. He's not going to have an amazing Orca timing or anything this game, but just the fact that he's still effective is really, really important. And that was kind of a perfect example of Brax using those long-range uh, ball lightnings to get something done in a fight. He he really likes doing that. I think, like, CTY used to do that a lot, and uh, Resolution as well. Demon getting sent back bottom lane. Bugatti's alone backwards. now. Bugatti is stuck. He does have his ultimate, though. Battery Salt Cox is going to go. Stops the Sun Ray. But Talera may be in trouble. Her spike's not there. Finger Talera going to try to man up. Did not expect uh -oh. the finger, but he's still going to kill him anyways. Oh. Talera with the presence of mind to bottle up and say, Finger's not going to kill me. I could kill him. Meanwhile, Sleasol going on Bugatti's out of Icarus time. No mana for Supernova. He's going to fall. And he does have his Midas recipe, but still, I'm super surprised. That Dude, was an overextension. Those were, those were some very irresponsible deaths. No, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Those were both just very irresponsible deaths. You're not wrong. Enemy Phoenix has the Midas recipe. Our four player. How'd you get in here? <laughs> From viewer of mine. Shoutouts to him. Io. Valera. He has the hookshot ready to go again, but... It's uh, right now back to farming. We had a couple of really quirky kills down bottom that probably shouldn't have happened. I, I won't say classic Jimmy because that wasn't really that classic no. of a Jimmy play, but still. Okay, I've got a question for you, Travis. Okay, what's that? What the hell is Disruptor on? Looks like a fish, but it only has two legs. Also, how does it balance with two legs like that? Uh, his his mounts change with the cosmetics. This is supposed to be an eel. Why does the eel have giant legs? I, I don't know. It's supposed to be an eel, though, I'm pretty sure. It's an anguilla. Let me read the flavor text here. There are a few mounts that handle the electric currents that surround dis an disruptor. An amphibious eel? Yes, see, exactly. Oh. Amphibious electric eel. I've, I've, someone asked me that question before when I was casting. I have no idea who, but... That's it's... one of the most weird mounts I've seen, I think. But he was it's riding really a catfish bizarre. the other day. Yeah, I like that one, though. That one's pretty funny. <laughs> well, mid lane, Brax still just farming up here. Building towards that orchid first. No surprises. Thorn builds have not changed in the last probably two years, so... Pretty much the Storm same skill build, build has. as the, always. The skill, the skill build, build has. has, yeah. It's all about maxing overload and remnant now. And actually, I think that allowed him to survive. You saw that damage he was pumping out into the yeah. I mean, that's a great, this is a great example of when this build is really good. You can use it on IO yeah. and just abuse the fact that he does not have a ton of HP. And now he's a double aggressive. damage rune. This could be a very, very good kill for him. The other thing that makes this build reasonable is that you have a line on your team. So sometimes you need levels in pull just for the extra CC, but... 
That's why you draft this. around him. You draft around him so you don't yeah, have absolutely. to have any sort of disable. And he'll get it anyways later, which when he that's the the only time that electric vortex is useful is when you have Orkin and you could get solo kills. That's like the only time. Uh, and, and then after that, obviously. But until that point, like if you, you can't get solo kills, oh, he's gonna get tossed Abbott. Is he dead? Nope. He, I think they missed the combo, maybe. Maybe I'm insane. No, I, th I mean... Yeah, Wisp wasn't there. The spirits weren't there. That's a good point, Pim. He still should live through these throws. Bottom lane, Static Storm, Bugatti. You are not getting your Supernova off. You are dead. Big kill. Finally, Goody and the rest of this bottom lane hitting their stride. Roche is going to be the choice, though. BSJ, Battle Trance is going to go. Does he have a Quelling Blade? Absolutely. Mad's here with, like, four creeps. He also has a mech. This is not a problem. They'll flare it, but they're already not really in position. They don't have Static Storm. They're going to have to Kinetic Field. Roche is low. Is it low enough? Relocate coming in. They're going to try to fight this. They jump in with Goody. Is he going to take Roche? He snatches it. What a big play. BSJ getting hand of God it. About to take down the Aegis, but that's it. Talera hookshot it. I believe missed. Finger comes in. Derp Derp's going to fall. Brax does have that DD. He's out of mana, though. Taking a lot of right click. Goody's trying to get out of the pit. Mech flies. Demon doesn't have mana to work with. Brax's DD now gone. Here's Bugatti. He's got the supernova. Relic's going to try to TP. He will make it away. The flare. Goody stuck in the pit. He'll try to TP out. Is he going to make it? Now he's going to try to poof. He'll make it away. Grand Theft Aegis comes out. But they do lose a lot of heroes in the process. That was... uh. That was that was really impressive, honestly. I mean, they lose a little bit for that, but sneaking in, stealing the ro stealing the Aegis, very very important. And I mean, most oh, he, of them make it out unscathed. Did he buy a blink when they when he knew they were doing it, and then blink it and poof. That might have been what was what happened. Uh, because I think I'm not sure if he had it when he before he knew about it, but he definitely had just bought blink because he didn't have it. I I've checked a couple of times, in fact. So that was an impressive play. I mean, I don't know if that's actually worth it though, man. Like. Yeah, sure, they got the Aegis. They didn't get the Roche. They didn't get the Experience or Gold. Um, they lost a couple of heroes in the process. They got one, maybe. They got BSJ, I think. But even that is not that worth it, I think. I think in terms of just shit, straight up numbers, Will might have lost that fight. That's true, yeah. But, I mean, there's there's a pretty huge value to stealing the Aegis, though. Yeah, I think so. Because then they might be even further behind than they are now. But who knows? Mid lane, a little bit of pressure here from Relic. And uh, he's really yet to have a huge impact on this game. 0-0-1. Oh, oh, but he is farming quite well. So, going to have that Aghanims very, very soon. Cyclone's up. Matt is uh, looking to defend this tier 1 tower. His mech and his hand of God have been huge. They've been paramount this game. All this early aggression that we'll have, not really doing that much because of... The, even that fight, a couple heroes probably should have died had it not been for hand of God and mech. But what about Goody? Does he have an Ags yet? Um, let's check it out. No point booster. He'll probably pick that up now, and then he has one more component to go, as he already has the Ogre Club and Band of a, a Blade of Alacrity, excuse me. Moving forward here. Phoenix uh, is minus off cooldown. That's killing me. I'm sure it's killing you as well, Travis. There we go. I think A kills every caster when they watch. <laughs> like, you can only look and... In, in and just stare and, and be in, in terror, so it's a bit unfortunate. He uses it eventually, it's fine. For fucking mad, he's gone for great ags after these these couple of items here. This is a really interesting build from mad. And uh, I, I think, I mean, it gives you a little bit better viability the later this game goes, having that heal on a really short cooldown as well. Bottom lane, Talera, Icarus dive. He does have his ability to ultimate, and he's going to have to, Talera realizing that he might be in trouble. Ah, uh, he's hightailing it out of there, just lives with 50 HP. Supernova goes, pull on the other side, but there's going to be Brax trying to get the kill. We'll pick up one. There's the Earth behind the blink. Poof coming out from Goody and the Static Storm. Goody. Wow, double kill comes out. How are you? He's going to get the creeps as well. Meanwhile... They get the kill on Bugatti, who got caught out after his Icarus dive. They lose just an IO. These fights, again, coming out for Wheel in the early to mid game, are just better than what Summoner's Rift have. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Static Storm is destroying them in these fights. And I have to say, even though Fans of Soyan has not been, like, perfect with his micro, he's still having a huge effect on these fights with Meepo, just putting out a lot of raw damage. 
That was so impressive. Blink into Earthbind, follow up by the Static Storm. Brax can't leave. They get the kill. They get two kills. They get three kills. Maybe a hook. Oh, Demon. Almost got caught. Will he chase? He gets it to Lair the long range hook. He snipes him. Demon trying to get his way out. Not going to happen. The blade mail he earth spiked and killed himself. Doesn't matter. Talera gets the kill. That was a beautiful hook shot. That was on point. Brax now almost has his Orchid. So this is going to give him some really good pickoff potential uh, against the Wisp. Against the Disruptor. Definitely. Mm, probably not the Clockwork since he has a Blade Mail. Although there is a chance because of the long range zip. He'll be able to take him down. Doesn't really help him too much against the Meepo, but uh, or the Tiny, who's just way too tanky for him to kill unless he gets in a really, really unfortunate spot. But that Orchid is going to help him quite a bit. I mean, the Disruptor, you mentioned how good the Static Storms have been and uh, how effective they've been, and the Orchid obviously are going to help him deal with that. The Orchid also who mm, good against a lot of the heroes in this game. They've got to try to find a way to take down the Meepo, but he has now his extra clone. Is he level 17 yet? No. Still yeah, only level nice, 2 ultimate. Obviously against the Wisp as well, so this is a really, really, really good item this game. It's going to be extremely effective, I think, for Brax. So do you do you think, by the way, do you think, um, going back to Meepo, he picks up a Scotty next? Because yeah, I think that's been the general build for a lot of I mean, he has Blink already. Players. He has Ags. That seems yeah. fine to me. Gives you yeah. a bunch of HP. Yeah. Uh, the, Scotty, the Scotty effect is pretty good this game as well. Braxes. Look at Brax, man. Brax and a Phoenix Illusion, which still glows red despite it being that's Illusion. A pretty, that's a sick looking Illusion. Yeah, that is super cool looking. I've never seen that before. Almost purplish. When looking in the right light. And wow. There's the Orchid finish. Are they going to try to push an initiation off of this? Banana Slam Jamma has his Yasha finished up. Helm of the Dominator as well. There's no real lead here. It really just comes down to positioning. Uh -oh. Matt is going to get caught out. They do find Zerp. Zerp poof comes in. Brax earthbound. Talera gets the hook oh, shot. They no. do get that big static storm on the two. They don't even give a damn about that supernova. Although Relic and Sizzle being left out high and dry. But Sizzle relocates away. They're actually going to get ready to fight again. They're going to bring him back in. Meanwhile, they're going to find out on the other side of things. Goody just chops him down with his freaking shovel. Meepo, Keepo going to work. Banana Slam Jamma man fighting. Meepo, what are you doing? Goody throwing that fight away by running right into BSJ. He had no support on the backside. Talera didn't have hook shot. He'll have to cog up as well. Whirling axes, the cogs will push him back. And that fight was great until Goody goes down. They'll take yeah, the tier one tower though. The glyph's gonna just, fly. That was just a micro, a micro failure again, I think. Yeah. Goody, I think, is either does not play the tier that much or. I mean, maybe just a little bit out of practice. He's had a couple moments there where things like that have happened, and that one really hurts him. It's like a senior moment almost. Senior I'm walking moment. into the base. Oh, I'm dead. He's just, he, he randomly right clicks, and I don't know. Some, stuff happens. They are smoked up here. There was a flare coming over. They So they know they're doing Ancients. They did not see the smoked up heroes. Are they going to try to stop it and get caught? Does not look like it. Relic's just going to be content to farm now with this Aghanims. It's just going to build for the later parts of the game. I mean, we've seen how strong. Oh, the bottom lane, Talera is completely dead. But even just today, earlier in Dota Pit, we've seen how strong this tiny can be in the mega late parts of the game. Mm, good ball lightning from Brax. He was doing it while the Earthbind was flying. He'll get away. Orchid's actually, no, rather, say, um, God, Soul Ring. I don't know. I thought Orchid. I saw the Sage's Mask, and I was like, that doesn't seem right. No, he's going for the Soul Ring. I, I forgot he hadn't picked it up because as the mid laner, as a Storm Spirit, you just generally go for bottle treads yeah. into the Orchid Malevolence. That's the build. By the way, no. Relic's going BKB, and he's also maybe getting a Manta style, so he has two ways to deal with that Orchid Malevolence. Yeah, I mean, for Tiny, it's not even a huge deal anyway. No, it's, it's not like, a problem. Okay, Orchid me. I'll continue right-clicking. Like, pretty it's... much just a complete waste of the Orchid. I mean, the old. What is the orchid actually? It gives you pickoff potential on. I mean, it gives Sleasel you pickoff potential and, against all the supports. Yeah, but is that that great? I guess against the Io, it's the big thing. That's the Io is really. We talk about Tiny a lot. And we talk about how good he is, but half the reason that Tiny is a attacking so fast and b is almost unkillable is overcharge from Sleasel. Yeah. So it really comes down to Sleasel's positioning and him not dying. So a Ghost Scepter could be good eventually. Maybe a Blink Dagger. Vlad's is also a fine choice, which we see a lot from Io's. Uh, any of those choices, I think, is fine. If you can get there, that is. Uh, if you can get there. 
And, uh, I mean, Mad going straight for this Ags build is going to help him be relevant as this game goes later. But Ken obviously going to fall off quite a bit as we move forward, pretty much no matter what. I mean, the creeps just get a lot less relevant. Although, with that Ags, he is going to be able to pick up, you know, some of, like, the, the better ancient creeps for him are, like, the, the Granite Granite Golem Golem. Ones. Yeah. Gives you the 15% HP. That's pretty... Pretty sick, honestly. The thing about the granite golem is that it just pushes. It, it, like if it's yeah, in the I mean, front you just lines, like a click it and run it down the lane. And you just have to spend time with a tiny. I guess he could take it down pretty quickly, but no smoke yet from Demon and Co. I think they might have one on the Chen. They don't actually. They're just sitting nearby, up under the high ground. Roche is available. Now the BKB done for Tiny. Is this a fight you take here? It's 22, 23 minutes in, and I think both teams are just as strong as the other. Goody has a ultimate orb, so it is, he is going to be going for the Scotty Heat. I think he'd like to finish that item first, and Derp Derp would like to finish this Blink Dagger that he's more than likely going for, but they're rotating down bottom, and it looks like uh, they want to push this lane out so that Summoner's Rift have a bit of an advantage. As the lane is press pressing, they can maybe head over to Roche. Meanwhile, Top's going to get pressed. They actually still don't have this tier 1 tower top lane that they need to take. One thing about these engagements, just thinking back on the last one, I think Rax does need to be a little bit more patient just because, you know, is usually the way you play around the Disruptor as a Storm Spirit is you just wait for the Static Storm to get used so you can plan around it. But the way he's been initiating, he just kind of like YOLOs and goes in. And uh, that's not a good plan against the Disruptor, to be honest. Oh, so either they he's going to have to make an adjustment to his play or buy a BKB. Yeah. Banana Slam Gemma knows, or they know rather, that Banana Slam Gemma's in the pit. They're going to head over, they're going to try to contest. And it looks Brax like Summoner's Rift, they're ready to go. Can they get another Aegis Snatch? But he's going to jump in, he throws the Earth Bind, hits it up onto BSJ. They get the Toss Avalanche, they get the Roshan, but it's BSJ picking it up. It's the Roshan going to the Dire side as well. BSJ out of the fight. What's happening elsewhere? Good is jumping on Mad Brax. He's going to jump in across the way. Tolera's going to fall. Two for one so far. Derp Derp about to go down with Io gone. Relic has to back up. And Goody has been left all by his lonesome. And it looks like Summoner's Rift will take this fight. They'll take Goody as well. It was just a two bit, a tad bit late coming up from Wheel. And they could not get that Aegis. And really good bait coming up from Summoner's Rift. Jumping in with Brax across the way. Demon uses his finger. Big, big fight for Summoner's Rift. The other thing is uh, Tolera. He clockwork hooked like right into a creep, so he wasn't Ugh. able to get the stun on that. He went into one of those wildkins that were just hanging out on the top cliff there, and uh, that that definitely neuters their potential engagement in the beginning as well. So extremely good fight for Summoner's Rift. Yeah, but now if we look back on this game later on down the line, what we say was that the the fight that won them the game? That's the real question, as they are taking a tier two tower. I mean, this, Still that a was a huge go. fight for them because they know that they're on a timer with this tiny on the other team. Meepo scales very well as well. They don't have any heroes like that, so they need to they need to push to end this game sooner rather than later. I think they're going to use this Aegis to try to get another tier two, possibly even push it to get a tier three. I mean, they know they absolutely know that they have to go. I feel like that fight was a bit disconnected. Um, yeah, it was. I think they all went over there together, but like half the team was on the high ground, the other half was over here. There's like fights happening in the pit. It's really tough to cover all three of those locations at once. And right. uh, Brax is going to be going right for the Bloodstone. Again, no surprises here. Uh, he did have the option, I guess, to pick up a BKB here, but it seems like he learned from that previous fight and is not going to just go in and, and get destroyed by the Disruptor ulti. So, he learned his lesson. He's going to be going for the Bloodstone. Yeah, Cole Brax... Up the blank. Yeah, Brax has been... His play that last fight was really, 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 really solid. And with the Bloodstone, he becomes uh, a big threat to wheel. <laughs> As are many of the heroes on the enemy team. Uh, Channel will pick up an Aghanim Scepter. Oh, God. The dumb-looking ancient black dragon with his tongue sticking out, stupid-ass freaking creep. He's looking for the ancient golem. He's, he, he, he deals with the splash damage. Oh, yay, splash damage. That it's does push pretty well. Creep. Yeah, it's, it is very derpy. It does, but it does push pretty well into creep yeah. waves and stuff like that. And It pushes well, and I think, you know, just anything with spell immunity that you can just, like, run at them yeah. is another Not thing bad. that they have to deal with. Um, and also with battle trance, I think it affects creeps. I might be wrong about that. I think it does. Um, uh, I don't know. All, All allied, allied heroes. heroes. Just so. kidding. 
That's a you know you would have lost on Jeopardy on that one. I so really would have. Dota well, two got, Jeopardy. If that was now a he thing. gets the he gets the granite golem now. So this is a. Uh, I think they're just gonna push with this. Dota two mechanics are so fickle. Oh, they he really jumps are. right on a goodie. Banana slam Jamma does get earthbound. He does have his his BKB, but still he's he's uh he's not gonna chase into that. Goodie, what did he buy on the other meepo? Okay, so it's a hex. That makes sense. Wow. Definitely the other option here. Uh. I do worry that he might just get blown up when he moves into Hex, but I, I like that choice. There Hex is a, onto Brax seems huge this game. Yeah. Brax, I think now is going to be forced into a BKB after this. Yeah, I agree. He could go Shiva's, but I think the better choice is the BKB. If he goes just Shiva's, I'm fine The Hex, I think, forces you to buy that because if not, you get Blink Hex like this gonna jump in. and Brax die. just gets blown up. The Static Storm, big neck, big hand of God, but Brax should still fall low, but they do get the kill on the Meepo. Still a two for one. Banana Slam Jamma manning up, taking down the Disruptor. It's a two for two. Big toss, big avalanche coming in. Banana Slam Jamma still has the Aegis as far as I know, and it will fall. Talera ready to go, maybe to go for another fight, but they're actually just going to let him live and back up. They don't want to fight into him again. I'm surprised. They probably could have taken him down once more. But BSJ, he's too swag for that. He's going to walk back up to the mid lane. And moving forward, they're just going to take out the tier 3 with no buyback on the Meepo. They do need to be careful of Relic here, who's going to work on the troll. Relic taking the Sunray, though. That Sunray, the damage is real. Talera, uh, I think he came to the wrong neighborhood, but he does get a nice cog off. Ancient Granite Golem, that fight that, oh man, without that ancient granite golem, I think Brax dies 10 times quicker. Well, maybe not 10 times, but he dies a lot I mean, quicker. 10% quicker. 15% quicker, in sure. fact. Yeah, great. Okay. <laughs> Bugatti's got a TP away. You know what? <laughs> I'm going to be casting like eight games today. Let's go. Oh, man. Well, I mean, this is the issue for Brax now. I mean, he is just forced into a BKB because... That was exactly how the rest of these engagements are going to go. Wow, oh, Talera to... finds oh, Matt. God. I don't know what he's doing across the river, but he found him. He might have been shadowing him the entire time. By the way, Talera's going for an Orchid. Orchid Clockwork, huh? Hmm. I mean, that seems reasonable. Balance the Chen or the Lion or even... Phoenix even or Phoenix Storm or even before Storm. BKB. Yeah, like that's all a fairly four good of That's a good item this game. Yeah, that's a very solid item. It's very unconventional, but that's good. I like it. All right, well, you're going to... I mean, if you're Brax now, you just have to try to find, a, find some room uh, to get a BKB. BSJ? Oh, big long-range jump. Static Storm goes BKB. Brax doesn't have one. Relic getting man-fought and getting destroyed in the process. There is going to be the deny coming out from the Bloodstone. Banana Slam Jamma looking for Talera. We'll fight it. Everyone's below like 20 HP or 200 HP on the side of Wheel. They're even going to find Derp Derp. Banana Slam Jamma is just saying, guys, don't worry about this game. You just follow me into any engagement, and I'll kill everything for you. That, that's, he's man-fighting a tiny. How many people can man-fight a tiny and win? I, I mean, this is the time understand. when he's going to be able to do it, you know, 30 minutes or so. But in 15 more minutes, that's definitely not going to happen. He had an Asulkuros, though. Sure. Ow. But tiny, is, tiny and Wisp are the only ones still alive, so they're going to be the ones that have to hold this down, but I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, this rack's now exposed, and they, they're going to have to glyph it. Everyone's back up within about 10 to 15 seconds, so they probably lose this melee rack. I mean, they could even lose the range racks. They're going to run in, blink forward. They don't go for the avalanche. The toss goes as well. The sunray hex up now onto relic. Ball lightning from Brax to the high ground. Now Goody jumps back in. Banana slam Gemma in trouble. No BKB. Big supernova coming out, and they got the fire spirits off. Oh, the supernova is about to fall. Banana slam Gemma jumps back in and gets Goody. Might die for it, but it's probably worth it. Big hook shot from Talera to keep into place. Right click. Banana Slam Jamma, he's not dying. He ain't dying anytime soon, but he gets pushed out by the cogs. He will die. Brax goes down, Jesus. cannot deny himself. Melee Rax was taken. Relocate onto Mad. Mad's like, please, God, no, I'm just a Chen. I'm too young. He's going to get right click. The glyph's going to go. Rather, the mech, he gets clubbed by a giant ass tree. That thing, it's like a truck. Yeah, York and now done, and wow, oh, that was quite He's going to lose his creeps, too. That kind of sucks. Yeah, that's a bit unfortunate. Yeah, but it's, even, it's more significant in the later parts of the game here when he starts picking up ancient creeps. Obviously, it takes longer to get those. You can only get one a minute, and uh, Blair is rich after killing that yeah, he just bought, he bought He bought the Orchid out right after that. They've lost the melee racks. They've lost the tier 3 already. No permanent damage to the ra range racks yet, but look at all of this vision coming out from the side of the Dire. They, get, they have so much room to work with. They, they know exactly where every hero is. 
And Will, although they defend pretty well, they're still, I don't know if they're going to get that much off the back end of it. Relic Steel needs a, a bit longer to come online at this point. And, well, Goody's just been getting focused down. It's really just been a, a tough time for him. Although, luckily, he has a pretty quick respawn time. He's a freaking Meepo, after all. He is also level 20. They won't push Tier 3 Tower for Wheel. They'll back up. That Rax was... needs to be really careful still. He's been getting absolutely wrecked in these fights. Like, just... He needs to be... I mean, it's really hard now for him to even play around the Disruptor ulti because of the Hex on Goody. But Goody can just blink in, Hex him, they drop down the Disruptor ulti, and then he's just stuck there. Three fights in a row, he's just died, and he was a huge part of their engagements in the earlier fights, and uh, this time around, not the case. You know what might be better than a BKB this game? An Orchid? Well, I guess you can't you can't BKB you can BKB out of Static Storm, so forget that. That's the, right, the he needs to get he needs to get a BKB. Valera is gonna get caught. I think he's dead. Finger, they relocate in. They still might fight. Goodbye, Bugatti. Supernova, Look, not goodbye. Brax does get Jesus, silenced, Brax. and that's it for him. And it looks like Bugatti is gonna fall in the end. They've also lost uh Demon died somewhere else. Okay, Lion got one shot. Good to know. <laughs> classic. Uh, classic, classic Jimmy. And, uh, I mean, Banana Slam Jamma is really the only thing, I think, at this point, that Summoner's Rift have to be happy with. He has him. He has he's his BKB. He's dead. Earthbind again. Bank. Yeah, he's not going to BKB for this. He knows that he's going to go down. Jesus. Okay. This Despite... Tiny's getting large. Yeah, he is. And it's also good he is well. He's not maybe making the, the flubs that he once made. Back and forth we go, folks. 33 minutes into this game. It's, it's game three. It's not the decided game yet, but it's still. Um, one team would like an advantage. Who will it be? Wheel. They see Roshan is up. There is an Observer Ward, so Mad knows this might be happening. He'll actually take a, a Ancient Thunderhide. Mad's like, I, I might be dead here. Kinetic Field not connecting. Glimpses may be there. They're chasing him down. Body Block might go. They're going to see oh, Brax going on a Derp Derp. The toss coming in. Maybe an Earth Find. The Hex is up as well from Goody. They don't care if they lose Derp Derp. Mad is going to get chased away. Buybacks are available for those two big heroes. Of course, the Troll as well as the Storm Spirit. They might have to use them if they want to contest this Roshan. In fact, they'll definitely have to use them. I think this game is starting to fall apart for Summoner's Rift. Now there's going to be an Aegis on the side of the Radiant. Relic is building a damage item now, which is really scary because he's going to be hitting so hard. Daedalus. Yeah, it's it's frightening. He's given his Yasha over to the Meepo, so it looks like it is going to be Relic who picks this one up. Man, Roche can't catch a break. He's getting beat down by a tree from a large rock, man. That's how you know. That's how you know you need to move out. Time for a new neighborhood. It's getting yeah, rough in here. I mean, like... The and, cops uh, are constantly knocking at his door. I'm like, man, do you want protection tonight? Like, we can stay outside. We can help like, you out if you really need to. I mean, like, to. listen, we really, like, just file a, a report, dude. Brax is like, man, they're stealing my bloodstone charges. Roche is like, they're killing me. And then, I mean, Brax and, is just useless now, right? Like, yeah, I think so. He is, uh, Two bloodstone he is charges. between a rock and a hard place. A rock being tiny and the hard place being dead. Yeah, I know you were going there. I, I, I knew it. Good work, Greg. Nice one on that one. <laughs> uh,. What else do we got going on? So yeah, Brax has two Bloodstone Charges. He's got an Ogre Club. That seems pretty terrible. They're just going to bear down on bottom lane now. I think uh, I think Wheel are looking to oh, put there's some a damage cheese on, on this. Meepo. That's okay. That only does I mean, that's work pretty mediocre. Meepo. Yeah, never mind. That's not great. I mean, he's, he's, he's just going to give it to Yeah, I think he'll give it to, to Tiny when the Aegis goes down, probably. If he stays alive long enough. Look at that Tier 3 tower. BKB, Banana Slam Jam is like, it's time to go, boys. Meanwhile, Meepo jumps in. He tries to hex up somebody. Static Storm, it does go, I believe. Brax is going to get caught out. Again. Goodbye, Jesus. Brax. Does he have buyback? Absolutely not. He does use his deny, but he's dead for 68 seconds. Banana Slam Gemma does get the kill on Goody. Relic has to back up. No cheese now, ready to go. No bots as well coming out from Goody. Relic almost dying to that Sun Ray. Overcharge just keeping him alive. And they can't get the Tier 3 tower. Banana Slam Gemma, he is doing his best. His best possible impression of anybody that can carry a game, it's going to be BSJ, and he'll take a double kill as well. I just, he is on a roll. He's 9-3-5, and five, and half these fights have gone even because of Banana Slam Jamma. Yeah, he's really the only thing kind of keeping them in the game at this point. Only one even close in the net worth of the Tiny, who is getting extremely scary here. I mean, EOT's just picked up now. He's, he's getting really, really, really scary.
He's gonna have a Daedalus pretty soon. I'm sure he maybe saves for a buyback, but he'll sell his treads, so that'll provide him some some money. What's the Daedalus situation looking like? It's close. Recipe plus uh, the yeah, Chrysalis is 2100. I think he could buy it, but he, he also could go MKB because of the uh, the troll. Maybe yeah, troll is butterfly, so maybe it's MKB instead. Actually, I think both are completely acceptable. The relic getting an MKB, he he would have only like 500 gold if he bought it right now. Instead, he'll probably just continue to farm like four or five creep waves until he's back up and ready to go. Buying the MKB, I think, makes sense. I would definitely prefer that at this point, just to make sure he can kill the troll really fast. It is the flat damage. You get so much out of a, a Daedalus, though. That's the that's the, the trade-off. Well, well, we are going to send it over to Pimp Munkle with the replay. What's up, Pimp? All right, well, hopefully we're going to have some time this time around because last time I just, you know, every time we had a replay, everything just went to shits. Anyways, Relic was casually just trying to get the Rex done and Banana Slam Jam, he was coming in. He had no fear at all. BKB popped the whole combination from the Meepo blown on the Troll Warlord. It just didn't work out in the end at all. And then I got to say, this Phoenix Ultimate has been a game winner for Summoner's Rift right there because if not for this insane uh, Ultimate, actually, oh, let's let's go back to the live broadcast. No, 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 no. Never mind, no. never mind, never mind. Never okay. mind. Never mind. Let's 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 just let's just see what happened. Uh, basically, everyone just got stunned, and they could clean up. Relic didn't die because of a crazy Wisp overcharge, but you know, you hold your ground. That's already kind of a win for you against the Ages and Cheese. Yes. All right, now I'm done. Thanks. <laughs> God. You're exactly right, Pimp. I mean, if you hold your ground against those two items, you're in an okay position. But the problem for me is that our Summoner's Rift going to continue to keep pace with Wheel at this point. I, I'm not sure that's the case. Uh, Storm is finding, starting to find some room, and I, I mean, I, he desperately needs a BKB. But if he can't get the BKB before Derp Derp has an Aghanim Scepter, or even if he gets the BKB and Derp Derp picks the Ags up shortly thereafter, then it just feels like a waste again. But Brax, is, he's had a rough game. His first game, outstanding. Second and third game, kind of rough so far, but he can, he can make something happen here. Relic Overcharge going, there's the MKB. Goodbye, Tier 3 Tower. Good Fire Spirits, though. Yeah, that's very annoying for him. I mean, he does have the BKB to turn those off when that fight actually starts, but it does make this, like, slow siege a little bit less effective. But he is just... God. Tiny's at this point in the game are just horrifying. Cliff goes. What is that penitence. sound? Like a penance, I think, yeah? Yeah, it's penitence. Rax is gonna go. I mean, the other Rax is gone. There's the Hex up onto Relic, but meanwhile, Brax jumping in on Solera. They're gonna jump in. They missed the Static Storm, and actually, well, it does hit on Bugatti, but that's not the hero they wanted on. Banana Slam, Jamma taking down the Meepo, but already his BKB is gone. Relic trying to right click him down. They what? relocate him out. Hello? They relocate him out. Why did they relocate Hello? him out? Whisk? Oh, no. That what? was a mistake. And now I think maybe they both die here. I mean, he's not oh, bringing no. him back. He's not bringing him back. Well, what the? What was that, that? I don't think that was the right play. I'd be so mad if I was a tiny. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Oh. Hello? I'm killing them. I have a BKB and they don't. Oh, man. I do I mean, like what they're doing for Summoner's Rift. They are locking down Goody. They're making sure he dies first because he knows how important that hex is. And Goody can't do anything. Those poofs not really accomplishing much. So if Goody can somehow hex up... Banana Slam Jamma, they kill him before he gets his BKB off. I don't know if they give a damn about Brax, because what is, he jumps in, maybe gets a, a, a kill on support, maybe does a little bit of damage coming out, maybe they finger, maybe then Goody dies, but then Relic has free reign. But right now, Relic's being stopped by Banana Slam Jamma. It's just these couple of, I think, duels between the heroes that aren't really working out in either team's favor. But with that being said, I believe that Summoner's Rift do win that fight. And they've evened up the racks. The melee racks was taken about 20 minutes ago for Summoner's Rift on the other side. And now at their base, they have their melee racks gone in the middle lane as well. And I don't think there are tier 2 towers left. There's the one tier 2 down bottom. That is the biggest difference in terms of buildings. I'm just, I'm not sure, man. This game, even if it goes late, it can go any way. Like, Meepo's good, yes, but... I think it's he's more playing more tiny, utility honestly. Meepo right now. He's playing, he's playing Scythe. Maybe he goes for, say, a Heaven's Halberd. Or maybe I feel like I don't I don't really know exactly who he's been scything in fights, but I feel like you just want to get banana slam jamma and kill him. You make it sound so easy, like I mean, yeah, I mean I'm idealizing the situation a little bit. Brax finally has a BKB. Maybe he'll catch a break. Phoenix also has in the a BKB. next fight. It just feels like 
everybody's ignoring everybody except for Goody, Relic, Banana Slam, Jamma, Brax, and maybe supports are kind of dueling in the background. It's just really weird. Mad. 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 Mad's maybe dead. This fight's breaking out. They do get the Static Storm. The Supernova gets off. Relic trying to cleave some heroes down. Brax getting hit up. Out of mana. Banana Slam Jamma. He's silenced. Pops the BKB. Relic's alone. Doesn't have the aisle. They bought back on Mad. Goody and Relic trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with everybody here in this match. But he is going to fall. Goody goes down. Five dead. And the bell has rung. Really? The victors are on, Summoner's Rift. I mean, really disconnected fight there. The reason that fight went so bad for Wheel, the Wisp got exploded. The Meepo, like, it, another huge thing was the Supernova was just, like, chilling here. And Relic wasn't paying attention to it. Goody wasn't hitting it. And then at the very end, Goody starts hitting it. Or, uh, yeah, Goody starts hitting it. And it does not kill it. The stun goes off. Like, it's a really, really miscommunicated fight for Wheel. They force out a lot of buybacks. No buyback for the IO. Summoner's Rift seemed happy. They've used all of their cooldowns. No Hand of God, no Supernova, uh, no Finger. Battle Trance is up, and so obviously it's Ball Lightning. But they are more than happy with what they've just accomplished. That gave them so much, I'm sure, in terms of farm, in terms of experience. That is exactly what they needed. Any other items coming out right now for the Dire team? Let's see. I think Banana Slam Jam is almost six slot. If he could get rid of his Blink Dagger, he could buy a Satanic, maybe buy a Scotty if he wants to. Um, he's getting there in terms of his six slottedness. Bugatti picked up a Shiva's Guard. The BKB was done for Brax in that last fight. Now he's up to 2.3k gold. So whatever item he wants to go for, probably Shiva's slash Scythe, one of those two options. Yule's even comes out for Demon. So suddenly, what option. was a, a very, very rough game for Summoner's Rift has turned, and a lot like the first game, turned really well. Or really bad. Oh, God, what happened there? Banana Slam Jam. But that's a big kill. He might have to buy back. I don't know how he died mid, but he was just farming there, and they all jumped on him. They were not expecting, maybe it was a relocate, they were not expecting them to be down that mid lane. Roshan is not available for 26 seconds. Troll Warlord buys back, so he wants to be in the fray if necessary. Man, what a, that's, well, he has to buy back now, and that definitely diminishes some of the lead they were getting. Two buybacks left in the game. Storm and Io. And Everyone XP else is graph, theirs. A roller coaster of emotions. Gold graph a little bit less, but line. that XP graph is, I mean, look at that, man. It's like that's almost, almost a straight three line. 10k strings. So that is like, base of a cliff, honestly. Banana Slam Jam is going to walk into the Roche Pit, and he'll start it off. They flared it a second ago. They know that they're in there. Valera is like, I want a hook shot, but there's an illusion in my way. Look at this positioning coming out from these creeps. It's really hard to hook from any position. BKB is going to go. Brax is going to jump in. They want Terp Terp. They're going to find a BSJ going right to Relic. He's pretty tanky. Goody now is about to go down. Gets blown up. I think Demon fingered him. No, he uses the finger on somebody else. It's Portalera. And just like that, four heroes are dead. If four heroes are gone, Summoner's Rift can push down mid. They are more than happy with that fight. Brax, oh, the man. BKB has unlocked Brax's potential on this hero now. He has realized that he just needs to go in the back, kill the supports. He destroys the Disruptor, follows up by killing the IO, and that leaves Tiny all alone. Now that Brax has this BKB, he's really coming alive here. Banana I don't know if they're going to be able to hold this. Troll. No, this Rax is gone. More than one Rax is gone. They can't go bottom. They're going to go tier four. They know they have a long time before the, the uh, goodie is back up in 49 seconds. They didn't kill Relic. He backed away smartly, but they have two Granite Golems, which don't stack luckily, but still extra 50% HP. You've got to make something happen if you're Will. It is game three. They're going to jump in onto Derp Derp. They'll bring him down for the silence. He's just too squishy at this point. Not using his blink as wisely as maybe he should. BKB for Relic, Banana Slam Jamma not even focusing him. The Supernova getting off as well. Now they're going to maybe try to bring Relic down, and he is going to fall. The big boy crumbles before them. The Ancient's going to be done, and it will be Summoner's Rift taking game number three. They now have a 2-1 advantage here and one game away from taking Dota 2 Canada Cup season number four. Yeah, and honestly, I think it just comes down to some mismanaged fights at the end for Wheel. I think if that game had gone the way, I mean, probably gone the way it should have, they would have been okay there. But Brax breaking that game open with the BKB, killing the supports, and making it so the Tiny is just all by himself. I mean, he had a really good performance that game. 690 GPM. 
But without the supporting cast of characters, especially the Wisp, he just cannot match up to two or three heroes bringing him down. Well, potential last game coming here in just a moment for game number four of Dota 2 Canada Cup. Oh boy, guys, we will take a quick break. Again, High Ground TV production bringing you the action. Uh, this will be my sixth cast of the day with the next game, but I'm looking forward to it as always. Super excited. I got to say, this series has been amazing. We talked about maybe some of the slower games yesterday and how they weren't as enjoyable. This series has lived up to the hype. And today, it'll finish off. Two games left, potentially, maybe just one game, if Summoner's Rift are able to take the victory. With that being said, shout out to everybody for joining us again. Our production crew, Pitmunkle, Mott Pax, What is Hip, and myself, Mott. You can follow us on Twitter. It shows right over here, right there on the side, which Mott Pax posted up. Check out Dota2.ca, Twitter.com slash Dota2Canada Cup for more information, or rather Dota2Canada. Uh, they also have a giveaway, a couple of giveaways going as well. Definitely check that out. Game number four, our potential final game coming up just in a moment. Stick around, guys. We'll be right back.